In this video, we're going to be thinking about the nervous system, the human nervous system in particular, and we're going to be thinking about reflex arcs as well as the anatomy of the nervous system. So let's say a cricket ball is thrown towards you. It's moving at quite a pace. You know that it's going to hurt you if you get it all wrong because it's a pretty hard ball. And so if it smashes you in the face, it smashes you in the face, and you want to avoid that. So what's our stimulus here? Our stimulus is going to be a change in our surroundings. And for this example, we're having a ball being thrown towards us. How do we know about this? What's our receptor? Well, in this case, it is the eye. The eye is going to pick up light, which is reflected off the ball, and it will detect that light. And then the effect, well, here's Jimmy Anderson catching a cricket ball. Well done, Jimmy. May you catch many in Australia. Jimmy's brain has got to tell his muscles what to do, and those are his effectors. Muscles are the effectors, and they contract to catch the ball. Just a quick word on muscles. Muscles can only really do one thing, contract. They can contract or not contract, that is, when they are relaxing. And so they never push, they only pull, they only contract. The link between the stimulus the ball and the response the muscles contracting to throw you towards it to make a catch is made by our nervous system just a quick word on the receptors of the nervous system the receptors convert one type of energy into electrical impulses so the eye will convert light energy into electrical impulses the ear sound energy uh, the tongue will convert chemical energy into electrical impulses i.e. it detects chemicals which are dissolved in your saliva, when those chemicals in your saliva bind to receptors in your taste buds, then it generates electrical impulses. Very similarly, your nose will convert chemical energy into electrical impulses. Uh, larger chemical molecules which are airborne bind onto receptors in your nose, and as they bind to those receptors, they set off electrical impulses. Your skin has various types of receptors, for example, these touch receptors, they will convert pressure or movement energy of a sort, I suppose, into electrical impulses, or our temperature receptors will convert heat energy into electrical impulses. They'll detect changes in temperature. Our nervous system has one main division, and that is between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The brain and spinal cord make up our central nervous system. Let's just highlight them here. So the brain is here, and the spinal cord is there. And they are kind of continuous with each other, and they form our central nervous system. Separate to that, we have the spinal nerves, which are nerves unsurprisingly coming out of the spine, and the cranial nerves, which are the nerves coming from the brain, penetrating out of the skull or cranium. The spinal nerves and the cranial nerves together form the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is abbreviated as CNS, and the peripheral nervous system you can abbreviate as PNS. So, our sense organs are linked to effectors by nerve cells, and we call nerve cells neurons. Now, you can spell neuron with or without an E, that is your choice. The stimulation of receptors in our sense organs sends electrical impulses along neurons, and we have three types of these neurons, sensory, relay, and motor. Well, let's start off at a receptor. Impulses, electrical impulses from our receptors, pass along neurons called sensory neurons until they reach the brain and spinal cord. Impulses pass to effectors, and they are passed to those effectors along motor neurons. And relay neurons make the join between our sensory and motor neurons. They relay the signal between sensory and motor neurons. Let's have a look at a motor neuron and indeed a sensory neuron to see how that all works out. The first thing to say about neurons is that they are cells. This motor neuron is a cell, it's an animal cell, it has a nucleus, there is its nucleus, and it's got a cell membrane and it's got cytoplasm, so there is the cytoplasm inside it there. 
and this is the cell membrane and this very long extension of the neuron is just an extension of the cell membrane and it's got cytoplasm inside it. Now this long extension is called the axon and this axon could stretch a very long way. It could stretch from for example the base of your spine to the tip of your little toe or the muscle in your little toe and that is just one cell making that distance and it's going to have to conduct an electrical impulse across the whole length of that cell and so that could take quite a long time and therefore the axon is covered with this stuff here called myelin it's covered with a myelin sheath the myelin sheath is itself made out of lots and lots of cells those cells are called Schwann cells and they are jammed in next to each other along the whole length of the axon with just a tiny little gap in between each one. Uh, if you want to know, those gaps are called the nodes of Ranvier, Ranvier, as, uh, you might prefer, prefer, as you might prefer to say. Who knows? And each of these are individual cells, and they've got their own little nucleus there, as you can see. Other little words. We've got dendrons coming in here. This is a dendron, or plural dendrites. Now, these are where it'll make connections with other cells, with other neurons. So maybe there is a relay neuron joining in here uh, and with an, uh, an electrical impulse coming in this direction that will be picked up by the dendron and then that electrical impulse will be sent shooting off down this way very quickly. At the other end of the motor neuron we have it joining up with its effector, in this case a muscle and here we have the axon terminations on muscle fibers uh, called nerve muscle junctions or if you prefer an NMJ. That's a motor neuron. This here is a sensory neuron. Again, it's going to have to be pretty long. So the tip of your finger will have lots of receptors on it. You can give it a squeeze now and see if you've got any receptors on it. The sensory neuron which carries the electrical impulses from that receptor has got to stretch all the way up your arm to your spinal cord. And so again, it's very long. And this little bit on the diagram here just represents that it's really long. Again, it's got a myelin sheath. Uh, and this here is a dendron. Now, it's worth saying that a dendron is the length of a neuron which carries an electrical impulse as far as the cell body. So in this case, the dendron is very long, but in the case of the motor neuron, the dendron is very short because it's very close to the cell body. But in the sensory neuron, it's a long way away from the cell body. The cell body of a sensory neuron contains its nucleus, just as the cell body of the motor neuron contains its nucleus. And then again, that is, so that's the nucleus, and it has its own cytoplasm being a cell. And then we've got the axon, which is the stretch after the cell body, again, carrying the electrical impulse away from the cell body to, well, to junctions of neurons in the CNS. So a long axon allows an impulse to be carried over a long distance from the central nervous system to a muscle. At the end of the axon there are the branches which make contact with the muscle fibers and our dendrites allow each neuron to be connected with many other neurons and some real neurons of the brain are connected over to over 70,000 other neurons. And to summarize this bit, the myelin sheath insulates the axon and greatly speeds up the conduction of the impulse. So that is the anatomy of a neuron and the gross anatomy of the nervous system. Let's now think of the specific example of reflex actions. A reflex action is a rapid and automatic response to a stimulus. And these are some examples. A bright light shines in your eye and the pupil becomes smaller. If you touch a hot object, you withdraw your finger. And the point with a reflex is that you cannot stop it occurring, and often you won't even know that it's occurring, and mainly they are there to help protect the body from damage. The iris pupil reflex, for example, helps prevent too much light coming into the eye and thereby damaging the retina. The nervous pathway for these reflexes is called a reflex arc, and that is a phrase that you will need to know for GCSE. This is a cross section through a spinal cord at this bit here. Uh, is in the spinal cord 
and this bit is part of a nerve coming in. So, to put everything in perspective, this is a sensory neuron coming into the spinal cord this way, and up it comes along here. And this part of the sensory neuron, that is where that is where the cell body is. So an electrical impulse, and I'll change the color here, will come along in this direction. Dendron up to here, axon going further. And it'll come all the way along here as, as far as the spinal cord. Now at this point, our sensory neuron ends. And that is as far as that electrical impulse is able to travel. But it does join up with another neuron. And that other neuron is a relay neuron. Now there isn't actually any point of contact between the sensory neuron and the relay neuron. They do not touch. And therefore the electrical impulse can't jump across the gap. And while we don't really need to know at IGTSC about the ins and outs of this, we're just going to call this gap, this special junction, a synapse, and we're going to leave it at that for now. So at the synapse, the electrical impulse is briefly converted into a chemical signal, and then it's sent on again as another electrical impulse going this way. And then we have our motor neuron, and off our motor neuron goes back down to wherever it may be that it's going. And that is able to conduct our electrical impulse further on that way. So, impulse started at a receptor over here, shoots down the sensory neuron, along it goes, along it goes, along it goes, gets to the spinal cord, uh, leaps across into a relay neuron here, and then leaps across to a motor neuron, and away it goes. And our electrical impulse is sent back out of the spinal cord to an effector. This is how it looks uh, in more diagrammatic form. Let's draw it in. Let's start off with our receptor there. And what's that receptor detected? Well, maybe you've been making a nice cup of tea, but you've been a little careless, and you've poured it all over your hand. Well, your hand goes, Ow! Yelp! Get me out of this hot water! And so, that receptor sets off an electrical impulse in our sensory neuron. That electrical impulse shoots along this sensory neuron all the way along here and our sensory neuron itself carries on up here goes into the gray matter in the spinal cord and it goes up through what is called the dorsal root and the swelling where the cell body is is called the dorsal root ganglion then into the gray matter as we saw on the mouse spinal cord and we join up to a relay neuron. That relay neuron then joins up to a motor neuron and that shoots off this way. And that motor neuron goes to a muscle, in this case the bicep, and let's just track the path of the electrical impulse. So up it goes along this way, along the sensory neuron, jumps across this synapse, jumps into the relay neuron, uh, goes out of the ventral root along the motor neuron, and then comes down to the bicep here. And we have lots of nerve muscle junctions there, which means the muscle contracts, causing our effect, moving the hand away from the hot water. Okay, on this page is just a summary of those actions. If you want to get all this copied down, then just pause the video at this point and have a look for yourself. But the key issue here is that the brain is not involved. Therefore, it means that the impulses don't have to go all the way to the brain and we don't have to wait for the brain itself to respond. That's very useful because it speeds things up and makes things automatic. This is another example of a reflex action. And this is the knee-jerk reflex. You can try this yourself if you hang your leg over the edge of a chair or something like that so that it's hanging freely. Give it a tap just underneath the kneecap. You see where this arrow is going here. 
just underneath the kneecap and what you will do is you will stretch this ligament here now as you stretch this ligament you're going to pull the muscle this way and as you pull the muscle this way you set off an impulse, an electrical impulse in this little stretch receptor in this muscle here that stretch receptor sends an electrical impulse along this sensory neuron uh, like this that goes in via the dorsal root to the spinal cord into the grey matter along the relay neuron here and then back out to the same muscle in this case the quadricep and that muscle then contracts pulling back this way and therefore pulling the leg up that way try it yourself it's quite fun now what's the point of this reflex it doesn't seem to particularly prevent damage well no granted but all these little stretch reflexes are things that we have in order to help our balance and that sort of thing so without having stretch reflexes working we wouldn't be able to walk without quite a lot of conscious thought advantages then of reflex actions and I've just looked at two features with two advantages number one the response is fast and automatic the advantage being that the damage done is reduced number two the behavior does not need to be learned because this is an automatic response and the advantage of that is well they're effective from a very early age so uh, young babies will be able to have an iris reflex and indeed young children will have knee-jerk reflexes to help them learn their balance I hope that's helped here are some tutorial questions to go with this PowerPoint question number one what comprises the CNS question number two define these words question number three describe the pathway taken by an electrical impulse during a reflex action and question number four choose one reflex action which you may choose to research yourself and explain how it aids survival. Thank you.